Hey, folks, we're here today with Ronnie to answer some burning questions that you may have about the board games division. So I guess, first of all, what is the board games division if people have missed the announcement? <laughs> yeah. So I think, like, a brief recap, and obviously you can go and, go and watch the longer vid with Andy Burgess for the detail, but we have a wonderful team of people that skull for us, write rules for us, and licensees that give us great, fantastic licenses. And we realised that by only doing miniature games, Walking Dead, Hellboy, you know, huge miniature intensive games, we were missing opportunities to do fun things that you can play in between games and you can play, uh, you know, in the evenings of tournaments and so on and so forth and, um, and, and do some things that we want to do with our own IPs as well. And, and, and dig in. We just had this wonderful pool of talent on every day and, you know, passionate customers that like what we do. We thought, you know what, guys, let, you know, let's go and have a look at this and, and, and dig into a little deeper and, um, and and introduce people to Mantic that have never met us through, you know, the Hellboy dice game or, or some of those things. So I think it's an opportunity to have some fun, make sure that we don't do it at the expense of the core Kings of War firefight hobby. Make sure that stays strong. That gets releases every single month, uh, Armada, etc. But we can go off and do some side projects uh, where resources allow, where we've got something cool to sail do. Excellent. I guess um, that sort of sums up with the first question, which was: Will existing games like Hellboy be folded into the new division? Yeah, I mean, I think Hellboy, the license is certainly. I see it more of a part of a board game division product than a core Mantic war game product. I know, and it is a board game. I think it's a dungeon crawler. That's really the grey area, you know, where you've got lots of minis, but you're playing them on a board. Um, but I think going forward, we've got a Hellboy dice game that's coming out in September that we're very excited about because it's not a beer drinking game, beer drinking game, um, where you push your luck, you test it. It's just brilliant. You can pick it up. It's my go-to game you know at home and not just because it's you know our own game it's just i enjoy that kind of push your luck roll the dice very easy to explain easy to travel with and um, so those kind of opportunities will will be the things that will come out of there so i think yeah hellboy retrospectively would have been and is part of our board game division um, and a similar question but the other way around is um will we see uh games like card games for example for things like the warpath universe and fight uh panafor universe yeah i mean card games haven't got as far as that yet um i think sometimes at the moment there's coming out with a license stuck on the front you know could we get walking dead can we get the hellboy can we get maybe something that appeals to new people and our existing gamers can play them because they know the ips but the ends but I've got some really bonkers ideas and everyone around does have in the what's the kind of games that we could make with just a few minis but a really cool fun board game that's very thematic and um, and so things that are something price wise in a whole different way we've got a kind of Christmas idea for a game that you know how much fun would it be to open a, an actual game on Christmas day that you can play on Boxing Day that's fun that's pop out collectible and um, all right, giggle. And and so we're working on things like that. So in time, card games, yes. Before time, or the first place we'll go to, we'll be taking a few minis, taking some more sculpts, and making something very easy to play, very immersive, and a little bit of comedy. Somebody asked, will we see a lot of these board games go straight to retail, or will it still be an emphasis on things like Kickstarter and GameFound? Bit from column A, bit from column B. I think the Christmas game we're talking about, we will probably, you know, have a special, um, a limited buy-in period, which will be sometime August, let's say, um, where we say, look, if you want it under your Christmas tree, here it is. You've got to order it now. Then we'll print that many, we'll make that many, we'll send it to them. So that's not like the kind of one-year Kickstarter um, loop, you know, and it's we've done on our own website and it's just going to be good fun. We'll have Kickstarters, Umbrella Academy's coming this week. Umbrella Academy, of course, is absolutely central to this. And this was the first one where I thought, this is not even a dungeon crawler. It's a board game. It's written by board game specialists. We took it to, you know, they, those guys took it to Games Expo, loved it. Family game, competitive game, great fun, cooperative game, sorry. Um, so, so, there, so that one will be Kickstarter. It's a big license. 
you know, we're doing the collectible, the deluxe edition on Kickstarter. You'll get your retail edition from retail a year later. And then others, we're just going to pull straight out. We're just going to say, you know, here's a great fun game. Here's a... We're just going to go straight to retail. Here you go. You know, order off the website. We've got it printed. Let's go. So I think a little bit of all three, some unique fun ways where we're going to take pre-orders simply so we can make sure everyone gets a copy that wants one. We can print the right number, but maybe with an upper limit. So we go, OK, we're not going past that. So if you want one, grab it. Some Kickstarters and some direct to retail. So a bit of everything. Excellent. And uh, I think we've sort of touched on this briefly, but someone asked, is there a plan to be just board games or will we see things like card games, dice games, etc.? I think dice games, card games, it's our opportunity. We call it board games. Well, I'll come and think about it. But, you know, games division. But then that would be war games division. So it's the non-war games stuff, I think is the better way of saying it. If we're doing a skirmish... Upwards, even a dungeon crawler, upwards. But really, if there's no board, if you're putting a gaming mat out and you're putting terrain on it, it's in our core division. And, you know, one of the things that, I'm, that drove this decision was that nothing must come in the way of supporting that. And in the past, when we were going back three or four years, we were either doing Hellboy uh, or League of Infamy or we were doing Kings of War. And actually, we're getting to the stage where now we have Armada set in the world of Panathor with Kings of War. We've got Vanguard that, I mean, it's a slight, you know, midlife lull at the moment, but all of those need support. The other side, Firefight going phenomenally well on the back of Dead Zone, which is by far and away the best sci fi skills game in the world. And I'll fight you about it. Um, they need releases, they need plastics, they need care, they need attention, they need Q&As, they need books, they need campaigns, which are just finishing our Dead Zone campaign off now. Uh, and at the same time, we're running a, a League of Infamy Kickstarter because, you know, we've got this, the bigger team, we've got more resources, we've got wonderful, you know, um, contracts and freelancers that work with us, so we can do more things, but sometimes we need to be able to say, you know, what's the shorthand? Is it a war game or is it a board game? And... Uh Someone's asked, will we continue to see uh, more support and content for existing games like Hellboy? So, for example, more expansions and that sort of thing, or, or will it be each we'll game be up. its own A little bit, I think, is on the next one? Yeah, I, uh, some will be very much, this is this game, it's here, have, a, have fun, grab it. Um, particularly when we're doing something like the limited edition one. So if we do this Christmas limited edition, it'll be a game that we intend to do in the future, but it'll be Christmas themed. The main game won't be but this Christmas one so it'll be totally limited if you don't get it then you won't get it it's going to be a fun you know we're going to put resins in it and, and have a lot of fun with it and that will be very much that's it it's not a range it's not a um, a thing actually it does we, what, 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 by doing it in this way and separating it off and looking at Hellboy as its own part of this board game division um, it does allow us to actually keep supporting games and revisiting them. And I think one of the things we first did, Hellboy, here's the board game, that's it, we're done. I mean, wait a second, Hellboy is a phenomenal license. People love Hellboy. Uh, let's do a, a, a dice card game, which was just great fun. It's 20, 25 quid. It really is in that pocket money. Um, take it out of your bag and play it. So then we've got the RPG, the, the, the Hellboy RPG there. That came out. Um, and... Because we can look at that and we can have it on drive through RPG, we can keep adding some new content. And actually, quite often when we do a Kickstarter on that one, you know, we overshot with the content. We've got more to release. And by having a new zone thing and looking at it, we can actually uh, support those games and keep going, I think. You know, Dungeon Saga was one that, for usually successful, just been running for years, but never bubbled to the top of why aren't we doing something for it? And every year we talk about it and say, let's do more scenarios. And every year something comes and bulldozes it through. Great. And the last question, maybe it was uh, slightly tongue-in-cheek, but someone asked, would we look at bringing back old games such as Mars Attacks? <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? Once you've, once you've tooled what you've done, why not? I think it would uh, need a little bit of a facelift. I thought it was great fun. I, I think it wasn't as much fun as it ought to have been. It wasn't quite a hardcore war game. It wasn't a board game. And it wasn't quite irre as irreverent as it could have been Adam, you know we should have made it even crazier and wackier but that said the minis were beautiful you know the whole scenario is just is sexy and, and and never say never i still know the guys over at tops really well and um and and, and everything becomes possible when you've got a, a great range of plastic tools 
There you go. You heard it here first, guys, or maybe you didn't. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Reset the clock. <laughs> That's excellent, Ronnie. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure we'll look forward to seeing some more videos about uh, the division coming up shortly. Yeah, we'll. Um, and until then, make sure you get over to Umbrella Academy, have a look, go have a look at the Deluxe Collector's Box. It's beautiful. It's going to be a one print. So uh, if you like Umbrella Academy and you like playing co-op games, uh, it's awesome.